Steve's amazing photo allows us to travel back through almost the entire history of the universe. But if we want to know what time it is right now, we have to go back a little further than Steve's picture allows. We need to get back to the point when time itself started ticking. Back to the moment the universe began. The Big Bang, so the theory goes, was the beginning of everything, including time. If you think about it, that's a remarkable thing to say. It means that the first day of the universe didn't have a yesterday. If time began at the Big Bang, then there was no yesterday. There was nothing, no time at all. And then the Big Bang happened and all this appeared. To know the time, we need to know precisely how old is the universe. Since the moment of the Big Bang, the universe has been expanding. Scientists have worked out how to rewind this expansion all the way back to the beginning, a time 13.7 billion years ago. This is when everything in the universe existed at one single point, the start of space and the start of time. Or is it? The orthodox view today is that time began at the Big Bang, time zero. But there are theories that suggest that maybe the universe existed before then in some sense. Maybe time has existed forever. And what we see as the Big Bang is just the, the creation of our little bit of space and time. I've come to Cambridge to find out what happened before the Big Bang. Neil Turek is one of the world's leading cosmologists, and he believes the accepted view that time began at the Big Bang is completely wrong. I would say the standard hypothesis that the universe sprang into existence 13.7 billion years ago doesn't make any sense. Something mysterious happened. 13.7 billion years ago, and we do not yet know what that was. Neil has a theory for what caused the Big Bang. If he's right, it would mean that time has been around a lot longer than originally thought. If you want to explain the Big Bang, the simplest option is that something caused it. And if something caused it, there was a time before the Big Bang. So if you look at the, the universe, and if we try to draw a graph of time and space, and we follow the particles emerging from the Big Bang, then they, they come out uh, of this event 13.7 billion years ago. Mm. And at that event, all the particles were on top of each other, and space had shrunk to no size at all. Yeah. So the density was infinity, there is no space to talk about. So that's the point at which time began? No, <laughs> not at all. Neil has come up with a clever, if mind-boggling solution. With maths drawn from the almost unintelligible realm of string theory, he believes the solution lies in additional dimensions of space and the existence of parallel worlds that he calls membranes, or brains for short. How then can we picture this, uh, the beginning of our bit of space, if time has gone on forever? The first uh, concrete model we could come up with, uh, coming out of string theory, was a particular setup called brain worlds. And what happens in a brain world is that the three dimensions of space we live in which I'll draw as a two-dimensional sheet, uh, just so that I can draw a picture of it, 
uh, you're to imagine that these, this is our three-dimensional world and we are made out of particles which can travel within that world. Literally, well, you and me and everything. Our yes. universe. Is within this world. Yes. So uh, what string theory says is that there's not just this three-dimensional world or sheet in my picture of it. There's another one separated from ours by a very tiny gap and that tiny gap is a fourth dimension of space. So what can happen is these, these two brain worlds can move towards each other and hit. So as they move to, towards each other, they become one. In Neil's model, everything we see around us exists entirely on one of his brains. But there are other brains in the universe separated from us by an additional, unseen dimension of space. If we go back in time 13.7 billion years, it was the collision of two brains that created the event we know as the Big Bang. And it was this that brought the universe we see today into existence. And so the radiation and matter at the Big Bang was the energy of the collision. Um, and as they separated again, the two brains were now filled or replenished with matter and radiation. So literally in this yeah. picture, the universe, which is all these brains, yes. exists forever. There's no beginning yes. of time. That's right. I think time probably has always been there and always will be there. And all we can really say is that something dramatic happened 13.7 billion years ago. Neil's theory is controversial. Rooted in string theory and requiring additional unseen dimensions of space, it's challenging stuff. But if it's true, time has always existed. Whether time began at the Big Bang or time is eternal, I want to know what time actually is. But if we start to break it down, is there a smallish unit of time? When you look out into the universe, you see things happening on timescales of millions or even billions of years. Here on Earth, we're used to thinking of things in days or minutes or even seconds. But actually, a lot of things can happen in a second. Just as we need a microscope to see small things, we need specialist kit to see smaller times. I've come to use the very latest high-speed video camera. By filming very short time intervals, this camera can then play back action in super slow motion. With the camera capturing the world in milliseconds, this is life 40 times slower than we used to seeing it. It's rather more elastic than I had hitherto suspected. <laughs> Print that one, yeah. and let's get another one. As we continue to divide time, we start to see previously hidden details. With the action 80 times slower, each millisecond reveals the 